Hey everyone, Tom Loria here. Welcome back to the shop. Um, a couple of weeks ago, someone wrote to me through my website and asked me where I find the scale conversion charts that I've used and shown you in other videos. Um, I don't find them anywhere I make them, and I, I sent the guy a set of them. You know, I sent them the files. They're just an Excel spreadsheet, so uh, they're easy to make. Uh, so I thought I would show you how to make them. Uh, this way, uh, I mean, these are really things, really, these things are so handy to have around the shop. I use them constantly, and I have, as you can see here, I've got a bunch of different scales. So it really makes it easy when you're working in one scale and then going to another. And fortunately for me, I don't work in that many scales. I work in basically three scales. Um, but it saves me a whole lot of time and head scratching. So let's get started, I'll show you how to do it. We'll be in and out of here in under 12 minutes anyhow. So we'll start with a nice fresh workbook. And the first thing we'll do is come up to the upper left hand corner with that little triangle click that and then we're going to right click anywhere on the field and pick format and we're going to go to the alignment tab and pick center and that's going to make sure that everything that we put into any cell goes into the center of the cell not to the left or the right the next thing we're going to do is a little bit more formatting by getting rid of some of the extra space that we don't need between the cells and the columns that we'll be using so we're going to have a series of two columns, an empty space, another series of two columns, and we're going to do that for uh, four pairs of columns. So this step just eliminates a little bit of extra space. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to column A, right where the letter A is, and click on that. It's going to it, that will select the whole column. And then we're going to hold down the Control key, and we're going to go to columns D, G, and J. And we're going to format those for numbers but fractions. And we'll take the fraction and we'll make it for two digits. And once that's done, we're going to go to columns B, E, H, and K and select them. Right click, go to Format Cells, I'm going to go to Number, and this time we'll go to just plain old number, but we're going to up it to three decimal places from the default of two. Great. So now we've got all eight of the columns we're going to be using formatted for either fractions or decimals. We're going to go to A3 and we're going to type in one quarter and hit enter. That'll drop us down to cell A4. And here we're going to put in a formula that always starts with an equal sign. Then we'll go up to A3 and select that. And you'll see that show up in A4. And we're going to add to that a plus sign and one eighth. Hit enter. And that will complete that formula. So now we're going to go to A4 and we're going to copy that by hitting Control C. Once we've done that, we can go to cell A5, go down to cell A25, and then with all of that selected, we right click and go to Paste Special and hit OK. And that will do what you've just seen done there. Now we're going to go over to column D, D3 to be exact, and we're going to continue. We stopped at 3 inches down at the bottom at 25, so up here at D3, we're going to put in three and a quarter inches, and we're going to do the same exact thing again. And here you see we're going to select cell D4, copy, and then we're going to select cells D5 through 25, right click, hit paste special, and hit OK, and you'll see now we're up to six inches. So we have to do this two more times. Now when you put in a whole number and a fraction, make sure that you put a space between the whole number and the fraction, otherwise it won't format correctly. 
So that's uh, something you got to remember to do. So it's six space one quarter. Here the operations are exactly the same as in the first two columns. And we're going to highlight the entire column down to cell G25. Right click, hit paste special. We've got one more time to do this. And this is a little tedious, but from here on out, the next formatting of formulas that we do is going to be almost, it, it won't be anything nearly as tedious as this. You'll see. So again, copy cell J3, highlight cells 4 through 25, right click, go to paste special, hit okie dokie, and there you've got it. Now that's up to 12 inches, and that's really all you really need. So now we can go and do our first conversion formula. So go to cell B3 at this point and start with an equal sign and go to A3. That'll choose that as part of the formula. Now hit divide, which is the forward slash, and by your scale factor. So divide by 24 and that'll give you the result. So now we can click that cell, copy it, but instead of just pasting each column we're going to paste all the columns at once. So we're selecting them by holding down the control key and going down from each column, the top of each column, down to number 25. We're going to right click, hit paste special, and now you've got the entire chart all filled in. Now, the only thing to do from here is formatting just to make it look nice and neat. Um, generally, what I do is I'll pick the entire, uh, the entire span of cells that I've got, and I'll put some sort of a border around it, and then I'll put dividing lines in between the individual cells. But I always, start, I always do it one operation at a time so I can see what each one looks like as I do it. Um, so I start with a nice border around the outside, then I select the cells again, and I'll right click and hit format again, and now I'll go to inside, that right hand box you saw there, and I'll get rid of those interior lines just by clicking on them, and I'm going to choose a nice solid black line for the verticals, and a rather lightweight dotted or dashed line for the horizontals. Hit OK. Let's take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, it looks OK. Um, these columns that we're not using, columns C, F, and I, they also have those lines in them, and I'm not crazy about that, so I'm going to take them out of mine. You don't have to. And you do that by hitting the format again and clicking until there's nothing there and you'll see what that looks like in a minute I think it makes it look just a little neater you don't have to do it you don't have to do any of this as a matter of fact but I find it easier <laughs> my visual acuity I find it easier to do all of this formatting because when I'm in the shop and I'm working I can look right at it and I can see it clearly So now to make things a bit more visually enticing, at least I need to do this, I'm going to pick all the fractional columns that I have, which are A, D, G, and J, and I'm going to make them a color. I'm going to make them blue. And now I'm going to pick B, E, H, and K. And I will make those light red. And again, this is all just so I can see things easily. I don't have to go hunting on the, on the chart for it. 
And if you feel like it, up at the top, you can write in full on the A column and scale on the B column or anything that makes sense to you. And then you can just copy and paste those into the remaining three pairs of columns. And once you've got those copied, all you have to do is hit one of the cells, in this case D, and hit uh, paste, and it will paste it in. One last thing to do is come up here to D1 and drag across to H1. Then come up into the toolbar and hit Merge and Center. And I'm just going to up the, the font size a little bit and hit Bold. And I'm going to type in whatever I choose to call this particular worksheet. And uh, I thought about it long and hard and came up with this. It's a bit obscure, but you'll get it. Uh, 124 scale chart. Think about it. And change the color. And that's it. It's done. And there you have it. So now, suppose you're thinking that, you know, you want these. I, I have a... I have a half dozen of these at least in different scales. And if you want to change the scale, it's really simple to do. You don't have to do a whole lot of formatting. So how do we do it? We're going to change the formula in the first decimal cell. So we're going to come up to cell B3, and you'll see up in the bar here, it says equals A3 divided by 24. Here, all you have to do is change the scale factor. Let's say you want to go to 48. So you'll come up here, put the cursor right there, get rid of 24, type in 48, hit enter, and that has changed that one. Now go to that cell again, that's B3 in our case, and we're gonna choose that and copy it. Okay, we've got the marching ants. So now we can select all the cells underneath it from B4 to 25. Holding down the control key, we can select E3 through 25. I'm going to do the same thing for the other two decimal cells. And click somewhere on one of the selected cells. Hit Paste Special. Hit okie dokie, and as if by magic, the entire chart is changed. Now it's 148. The only thing you have left to do, so you don't confuse yourself, is change the title. And you can do that up in the bar as well by just putting the cursor at after the after the four, eliminating those two, put in 48, hit enter, and you are done. And that's the whole thing. So now you can make as many of these as you like. And I've made some in some bizarre scales. So anyhow, I hoped it helped. And looking ahead to episode five of Building a Whale Boat, we're going to start with the framing. As a matter of fact, we're going to complete the framing. Uh, and we'll also take a look at the differences between framing for this method of building and framing for actual plank on frame construction. And we're also going to tackle some of the parts you're going to be needing very soon for the boat. So it's not strictly hull and whale craft. It's going to be more hull and boat details. So until I see you again, stay well. Now, break's over. Get back in the shop.